dragged Lawrence Donegan away from watching this Celtic game to chat about golf. Evening, Lawrence. How are you doing, Nathan? Very uh, well. Not much of a not much of a drag. It's not much of a game so far. No, there's not there's not much going on. But uh, if we yeah. hear if we hear a roar, we'll know what happened. The uh, Celtic have scored. There you go. So it's a big week in golf. It's Riviera. It's the Genesis Open. It's the LA Country Club. Tiger Woods playing alongside Rory McIlroy. It's been a washout so far, though. A couple of players did get out on course. Uh, posted scores for the first couple of holes, but they've actually decided they're going to swipe that and they're going to start again whenever eventually the rain does stop in LA. So it might give us a uh, chance to go on. Yeah, I was just going to say that's the first time since 2013 they've done that. Right. But I do recommend, if you haven't seen it or anybody's listening, it's out on Twitter, the PGA Tour put it out on a video of Mickelson playing the, the famous 10th hole at Riviera, a brilliant par, a short par four. He hits three iron off the tee, then hits it in a bunker, and hits it in another bunker, then ho- holds out his uh, his third bunker shot for a his second bunker shot for a for a par. It's a brilliant c- classic Mickelson. I was going to say peak Phil. Brilliant. Peak Phil, there you go. Who, uh, of course, so that's the only. But that that will. It's as if that never happened. <laughs> it it literally has been blanked from history. Uh, I yeah. wonder, would Matt Kuchar like certain events at the Mayakoba Classic last year to be blanked out from history? If anybody hasn't been following this story, it's been rattling on for a couple of weeks now. So Matt Kuchar, who'd be one of the better known American golf players, had had a bit of a drought. Wins on the PGA Tour for the first time in four years last year at the Mayakoba Golf Classic. He wins one point. $3 million, and he does so with a temporary caddy. His usual caddy, John Wood, was off that week. He brings in a local caddy, David Ortiz, better known as El Toucan. Generally, caddies would give the generally caddies would receive 10% of the winnings. So El Toucan may have felt he was entitled to 125, 130 grand. Instead, the rumor was he got three grand. It turns out this week that Kucher gave him five grand. Is that fair enough? It's an interesting one, isn't it? Uh, it's, I mean, who knows? I mean, it depends who you are. Uh, for, from my perspective, I don't think it's it's enough. But, they, they, I mean, Kutcher, Kutcher has said nothing about this. This has been raging for weeks, as you say, Nathan. Kutcher eventually sat down at Riviera yesterday and spoke mm. to a bunch of press guys and kind of defended himself. And not of it. I mean, these guys, I mean, they just haven't got... They're so detached from the, the normal world, Nathan. The... Uh, he was. He kind of made a deal with the guy, and he, he as far as Kutcher's concerned, he says he upheld his end of the deal. And uh, he, he said, uh, you would have thought the guy would have liked what I'd given him. I mean, he only makes two hundred dollars a week, so to get five grand for a week's work is really, really great. I mean, says Matt, who's walking away with one point two million. Plus, let's not forget, he will be bo- he will be bonused up from all his uh, all his uh, sponsors. So he's probably there's probably another million in there for him for that win. And he's given this guy five, five grand, and he thinks that the guy should be happy with that. The other thing he says, I mean, you would think he'd put the photograph up in his office as if some Mexican caddy lives in a house in which he has an office in which to put up a photograph of him and Matt, Matt Kutcher smiling after a, a tournament victory. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very odd one. Kutcher has a bit of a reputation. Uh, he, he's caddy John Wood. Uh, again, you say that. A lot of the carries are on this percentage deal, but I, I believe that Kutcher has never paid his carries on on percentage deals. He play, pays them a flat rate. Uh, again, I mean, I could, I mean, I've, I have heard a number down down the years, but but it's significantly into the six figures in terms of dollars. Okay. And and Kutcher's line is, you know, I pay you more than a doctor gets paid, you know, but he doesn't he doesn't adhere to the ten percent um, the ten percent rule. Uh, just to let you know that Valencia have just scored one 0 Valencia. So I, I couldn't. I noticed a change in your voice as you were uh, talking about Matt uh, Kuchar there. It, it's interesting in several ways in that it, how out of touch it seems Kuchar's been over the last week with the public reaction to all of this. That it, it, he, he, forever we were talking about this in Golf Weekly earlier. That next time you're out in the golf course and somebody doesn't live up to a bet or they don't buy a round of drinks, you're going to be called Matt Kuchar. Like that is going to become know, the slang. Go for the scroungy guy in the group. And like, that's something that's going to live with Matt Kuchar forever. For the sake of 50 grand, your reputation grand. is damaged forever. Uh, the, uh, it turns out that uh, Mark Steinberg, Kuchar's agent, is the infamous Mar- uh, Mark Steinberg, who's, mm. uh, who's, t- who's been Tiger's agent for years. And Steinberg apparently sent the guy 15 grand last week to try and shut him up. Uh, but uh, alas, it hasn't, uh, it hasn't succeeded. There is a, a, a kind of interesting wider point, Nathan, there is professional golf now. I mean, golf at the grassroots. You and I are. We are at the golf at the grassroots. 
yeah, and it's kind of struggling really for participation, et cetera, et cetera. But golf at the highest level now, the amount of money that these guys are making, I, I, again, I, I'd never heard of it, but there's something called the Wyndham Rewards. There's a new a hotel chain in America called Wyndham. They put up 10 million for the guys who finish in the top 10 of the FedEx, FedEx Cup regular season points list. 10 million. Uh, the European Tour announced this week that the winner of their end of season uh, event at, in Dubai will make three three million euros. So these guys are, mm. I mean, they are now living in a in an utterly different planet to the rest of golf, and you and you just wonder how difficult it is for them to kind of stay in touch with what's going on with real people. Uh, and it feels at times that maybe the caddies are the closest they come to talking to real people because caddies are still as real as it comes. And while they might get a percentage and the winnings are going up, so their percentage should go up it still feels as though that they are treated pretty despicably at times caddies they're not allowed into clubhouses in a lot of places uh they're very much treated as second class citizens like i know you've worked as a caddy yeah, uh, I, I, a number yeah. of years ago days. <laughs> well it's, it's, a, it's slightly changed from then you know i mean you see I, again there it's a bit like uh a certain level of pro is it's private jet and everywhere you know and you can see i, I never traveled in a private jet when i was a golf caddy i'll tell you that but uh, you can see occasionally you'll see a caddy uh, on, on a private jet. I mean, which is, which is great, you know, because the players, you know, there's always an extra seat on the private jet so they can throw the caddy in. Uh, but certainly, uh, yeah, I mean, caddies do pretty well these days if, you're, if you've got a good player. But it, it, again, it, 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 they do. I mean, some of the biggest names in golf, you should, if you're out there in the golf course, well, you, you and I are lucky. We can go inside the ropes and, and some of the stuff, mm. some of the way, the way, some of the, I mean, some of the players treat the caddies as, as pretty, pretty awful. I yeah. guess you think, well, I'm paying this guy three or 400,000 euros a year. I mean, I can talk to him any way I like, or I can treat him any way I like, or, and I can blame him for everything. So, uh, but it is, uh, it is a strange one. You mentioned Mark Steinberg there, who, as you say, people will know as Tiger Woods' long time agent. Mr. No. And, uh, and, yeah, Mr. exactly, no, Mr. No, and, and turned him into uh, the wealthiest sports person in the world. And it seems as though he's also Justin Rose's agent and is very good at the corporate side of things. There's nobody better at bringing in the money. Not particularly good at PR. Terrible. I, I mean, I, I don't, haven't you noticed a, a, a downturn in Justin Rose's image over the last you know, year or so? Mm. I mean, good guy, nice, well-spoken Justin Rose. It, it, you know he's he's not he doesn't appear as as nice as he as he was. was well, listen, thought. he's a, he's not a politician. He's a he's a golfer, as he said when he went to Saudi oh, Arabia well, a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's a classic. That is a classic Steinberg line. I mean, it's a classic Tiger line. It is interesting, Nathan, as well. Uh, you you look at uh, professional sports in the United States. The most beloved figure in professional sports in the United States is Steph Curry, mm. uh, NBA player for the Golden State Warriors. And and Steph doesn't go on all the time about politics. But he will speak out occasionally on social issues. Uh, LeBron, obviously, um, he speaks up quite a lot on social issues, and it does nothing to their corporate image. Um, corporations continue to love them. Fans absolutely love them. Uh, you would think that somewhere along the line, there has to be a professional golfer who who steps up to the plate and actually gets involved in in the wider or the world beyond golf. That doesn't go to Saudi Arabia and say, "I'm a golfer, not a politician." Mm. Um, it's uh, I, I'm waiting for that guy, and as soon as that, that guy turns up at the top level of golf, he's he. I, I will be wearing t-shirts with his face on on the front. Uh, but it is odd that golf does not does not seem to accommodate a personality like Steph Curry, for instance. I, I guess the difference probably is that Steph Curry goes back into the locker room, and there's a lot of like-minded figures there, and that he doesn't feel as though he's letting down his teammates, whereas you walk into a golf locker room, it does very feel as though, listen, if you vote Democrat, if you're left wing, you're very different to the vast majority of guys in there. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a real, I mean, there is a whole peer pressure thing. But these are grown grown men, you, you know, step mm -hmm. up. Um, it, it is, it's a con continued source of frustration. I continue to hold out great hopes for, uh, for uh, Rory McIlroy, I think uh, I think Rory's going to do it one day, and uh, and I look forward to that day. But we'll, we'll but we'll see. Yeah, here's hoping. Here's hoping. Uh, Rory wasn't one of those who went to Saudi Arabia last week and said that they were golfers and not politicians. Sergio Garcia did go, and uh, more than anybody, I'd say he regrets it. He ended up getting disqualified. It turned out that he had pretty much hacked up five greens in a rage. There's no footage of this, so we haven't actually seen it. We've seen a couple of photographs of the damage that was done. There is video of the day before when he loses the rag in a bunker 
and starts tossing the club around the place. Uh, let's hear what he's had to say because he's been on the uh, apology circuit over the past few days. You know, it's obviously something that, uh, you know, I feel shame of. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not proud of it. But, you know, the only thing I can do is, is what I said, you know, uh, I apologize for it. Um, you know, hope that uh, people accept it, uh, show everyone uh, that I'm, I'm ready to move forward and, you know, show everyone how, you know, how I am and how, you know, how I can behave on the course uh, and uh, with respect to, to everyone, uh, not, only, uh, not only the fans, but uh, my fellow players and, and everyone, and, uh, you know, make sure that uh, that happens. You know, there's, uh, there's so many things that we could get into, and, you know, I, like I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a very emotional player. It's both my biggest strength and probably my biggest flaw. Obviously, I received some, some uh, very emotional personal uh, news uh, early that week uh, that, uh, that didn't help. Uh, and uh, obviously they were in the back of my mind and and as uh, as I got frustrated on the course then it kind of everything erupted but um, like I said earlier uh, you know I you know I'm, I'm ready to move forward I obviously have the amazing support of you know my beautiful wife Angela and Azalea and and my team and my sponsors and and uh, you know all my fans uh, and you know I want to prove to all of them the kind of person that I can that I am and show them that uh, I'm here I'm ready to step up and and you know uh, show everyone uh, what I can do Sergio obviously getting better PR advice than Matt Kuchar has been over the last few weeks says there was personal issues it's very hard then to be overly critical when we don't exactly know what was going on inside his head he's been roundly criticized for this from all comers, with the exception, it seems, of the tour who disqualified him but didn't implement any sort of a ban. Is he lucky or are people overreacting to this? Well, you, you make a good point there, Nathan. You, you know, there is, I mean, it was pretty obvious. I mean, you saw from the video of the bunker business uh, that there was something odd about that. I mean, you know, they all get frustrated, but there was something very odd and, and over the top about that. So you kind of suspected there was something going. So you, you are loath to. Uh, to go at go at a guy if, if there is something going on in his life. Um, was he lucky? He really was lucky. Although, I mean, if you think about Simon Dyson, who got mm. I think he got banned for uh, he got banned for uh, th three months. I think it was for um, well, that was essentially quotes and it was it was cheating. It was tapping down spike marks. Although that's that's allowed now. Yeah, he, he, he got a suspended sentence in the end. Dyson, he got a he got a big fine, but they decided to suspend the sentence because they decided that. He, well, it wasn't premeditated, essentially. We, we Peter Lowry, actually, uh, who was on the rules committee at the time, yeah. talking about that. But I guess the the punishment for Dyson was worse than that. He was essentially ostracised by everybody on the tour. Well, absolutely, and 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 uh, again, it's, it's so different. There was another kid, a Scottish kid called so I can't, uh, Elliot Saltman, mm. was banned for six months. Remember him? I think he was uh, he got caught marking his ball incorrectly. And um, Garcia, you have to think. I mean, the different rules apply for different people here. You, you, you know, he, Garcia, he, gets, he obviously gets thrown out of the tournament, but he's still walking away with half a million appearance money. Um, you know, so there, there appears to be uh, not et equitable treatment. I, I think he is lucky, especially when, again, it wasn't on the, uh, on the European tour, but, you know, it's, occasionally his behaviour on the, on the PGA tour has been awful as well. Again, if you remember back, I think it was a 2007... Um, at Doral, he spat in the cup, mm. and, the, and, the, and the, he missed a putt and, and spat in the cup. There's an interesting thing if you go on uh, YouTube and, and just uh, and 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 search for Sergio spitting. His post-round interview after he was on TV uh, spitting into the cup after miss, missing <laughs> missing his putt, uh, he is absolutely unapologetic. Uh, it, it is quite remarkable. I mean, it was a pretty horrible thing to do. You consider people going in afterwards. And he was completely unapologetic. As you say, his PR advice is clearly, he's clearly got a, a better team of PR advisors. But to get back to your original question, yeah, I think, he, I think he's, really, he's got really lucky. I mean, he, he obviously he suffers a humiliation of mm. having to go round and around the circuit, apologising to all and sundry. And I, I've seen, seen that getting slaughtered by the likes of Brooks Kepka, uh, who, who did a very surprising interview speaking out, call, basically called him a child. Um, but, but that's it. You know, he seems to be... Again, if you're in that upper tier of, of the professional golf world, you, mm. you're not immune, but you're, you're certainly treated differently to other, to other guys. Yeah, you'd wonder, will it have any long-term effects in terms of Ryder Cup captaincy, in terms of his oh. legacy? You're shaking your head? Oh, not, not a chance. You know, he's, uh, again, it's, 
it, I, I mean, I, I hate to sort of repeat the cliche, but it comes down. I mean, Garcia is is box office mm. when when it comes to a Ryder Cup capsule. Can you imagine the controversy that's going to surround? He's going to along the, in the, the the eighteen months leading up to the Ryder Cup, which he is captain. Sergio Garcia is going to generate so much publicity because he does. He does run fast at the mouth. He he does things. He annoys people. Yeah. He rubs people up the wrong way. He's going to be a fantastic Ryder Cup captain. Yeah, I guess from an interest point of view, you just wonder when we talk of a game of honour and all of that, it's oh. pretty much stacking oh. up for Sergio from this incident, the spitting in the cups, the comments about Tiger Woods and fried chicken, like how this guy still has a, it's amazing, a, a, a reputation it? is remarkable. Uh, absolutely. Um, but again, you know, great player, charismatic personality it's it's amazing when I mean, you look at some of the stuff that tiger's got away with over the years i mean obviously we had the big scandal but some of the stuff he gets away with on the golf course mm. uh again different rules for different players uh tiger is playing this week he'll when they eventually start he'll be alongside rory for the first couple of rounds it's uh the one venue he's never had any luck despite the fact he hosts the tournament now riviera in the middle of la it's a whole change calendar people are probably only going to come around to this in the next month or so when they realize the players championship is in may the us pga is now going our players championship in march the us pga will be in may the open at port rush will be the last major of the year is it making much waves in america this new condensed calendar actually yeah i think it is i think it makes complete sense so you have the players and masters um Players and Masters, the PGA, US Open, and, and the Open Championship at Port Rush. And, and you know, I, I think that it kind of builds in a narrative sense. It kind of builds, a, from, from my perspective, I, I think that the uh, that the Open is the, is the best major, is the most prestigious major. So for that to be the climax of the season, because if you think of the way that it was before, you have the Open, and then for two or three weeks later, oh, God, yeah. I mean, can you remember who won the PGA Championship two or three years ago? I mean, mm. I'd have to have to call it Wikipedia and so I, I really like it I'll be interested to see what happens with the players um, because people, people I mean it's been moved for I think seven or eight years but if people cast their mind back to when it was in, in March there was a lot of there was a lot of bad weather because I, I was at a lot of those tournaments and there was a lot of bad weather uh, so it'll be interested to see but I think it makes sense and they really are the PGA Tour is putting everything it's got in the market department is putting everything it's got into the pushing this players championship uh, I don't think they've announced the final price one, but that is going to be absolutely enormous. They've got a new trophy, um, so so we'll see. I think he even got. I think Rory's in the in, in the market side now. He was. Uh, I think he was doing a one club challenge on the seventeenth uh, hole. I don't oh, know if you yes, saw it. I've, seen, I've seen it online. Yes, it was. Uh, it was kind of interesting how few greens he hit with fourteen clubs or thirteen clubs. I think he only hit four out of thirteen. The, the modern golfer, Nathan. That. They're not. They're not like you and I. No. we can manipulate the club hit deal. <laughs> We can hit any shot with any club, uh, not, not, not this Macaron character. Uh, text in from Coleman, after Sergio's Saudi adventure, he should enter the Ploughing Championships. There I don't you know go. if you've ever heard okay. of the Ploughing Championships. I do, I've been in the Ploughing Championships. Oh, very good. You enjoy there it? You go. How, how does it compare, I, compare to Augusta? I'll tell you what, it was, it was, I, I, it's a quick story. Uh, the Ploughing Championships, were, remember the Sevi Trophy? The Ploughing Championships were on at the same time as the Sevi Trophy one year, and the Sevi Trophy was, I can't remember the golf course. It was at the Heritage. Up. The heritage, and there was about 300 people at the semi trophy mm. and 60,000 at the Plowing Championship. So there you go. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, that's the Nick Faldo effect for you right there. There you go. While talking of uh, Ryder Cup captains, we have Potter Carrington on the show this Saturday alongside Damian McGrain and Peter Lowry. They're going to be looking back on their time together on the European Tour. Lawrence, thanks a lot for that. A play clip of Carrington. Mate. He is talking about, well, it somehow came up. I asked him the last time he actually spent some money on golf. 2007 Open, get into the playoff and Ronan, had, my caddy, had got six golf balls ready for the playoff that morning. N n nothing to do with me. I would probably not be, not superstitious, but I wouldn't have been that organised. But he'd given them to his father to mind. He wasn't going to carry an extra six balls around the course. So both the lads here are nodding because they know Ronan's not going to take any extra weight. And, but we couldn't find his father between the, the finish and the playoff because there was obviously a melee mm. of people around the, the first tee. So we sent my manager into the pro shop and he got six balls out of the pro shop, Carnoustie pro shop, logoed with Carnoustie on it. And I'm going to tee up with these golf balls, with the logo. Uh, and just before I'm, I'm about to go, we find his dad, we get the golf balls. We didn't have to use the, the Carnoustie logo balls. But my manager was obviously in a rush and had to get the golf balls quickly and whatever. 
I was hunted down for those price of those six golf balls afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not bring them back? No, sale and return, no. <laughs> I think I, 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 you know what, I don't have the golf ball. I, well, I might have the golf ball I won with, but I know I, have, I still have those golf balls with the logo on them. But yeah, I'm signing all the autographs and all the posters and everything, and they're giving it, well, by the way, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's 45 pounds for these six <laughs> balls. <laughs> I'd imagine your manager was sweating as well, probably with your golf ball deal, and this is the one that rolls into the hole to same, win the Open Championship. No, it was the same ball, same ball out of the shop. It just had the logo on it. it was, you know, that's the great thing with the tightest ball, the one the pros use. Everybody uses. Everybody uses.